Hi there guys and girls and welcome to my Mortal Kombat 10 Expectations real video. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'll just say this, um, I've had a cold the last, I don't know, week, week and a bit. So, while I talk I'm fine, but I do have a bit of still chesty stuff going on, so if I start coughing, that's why. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I do have a drink here, so hopefully that will save me. <laughs> But uh, I know a lot of people, after I did the fake one and turned it into a pumpkin head video as a joke, a lot of people want to hear my real expectations. I, I, I was going to do I was gonna do it all along, you know. I, I thought, if, I can't put out a fake one and not do a real one and <laughs> people get upset, you know. Um, so, I mean, we're at, we're at a really, like, as far as Mortal Kombat goes, we're at a, a really big, big stop here. Like, the next Mortal Kombat's got to be really special to me because it's the tenth fucking game. Ten Mortal Kombat. How many games out there have ten? You know, like, and that's that's just the main games. That's not even including like the special forces and the trilogies and the golds and you know all the other stuff. You know, all the little ports and you know the little Jacks MK unit and all that jazz. So, like, for me, this being the 10th Mortal Kombat, you know, mainline story, storyline game, is, it's got to be special. And it's got to be special in more ways than one. Um, <clears throat> see, when, when doing this, this, this list of 10 things, I thought, fuck, I could name 10 content things I want, 10 things I want about the gameplay, uh, 10 things I want about you know, the content on the disc. So, I sort of just came up with a list that sort of covers everything. And, um, yeah, f for me, um, like, yeah, like, like, like I said, it's just, it's, it's very hard to, like, I could name so many things, like, it's been rattling around in my head too, like the last, you know, months or so um, of things I I want to say. Oh, excuse me. So I'm going to start with number ten, which I think. Uh, and by the way, I've I've sort of rough roughly put these in a in a in a top ten. I haven't real. I'll be honest. I haven't really sat down and thought. You know, that should be in the fourth spot and. Just think of this as like a list, a, la a laundry list of, of 10 things I'd like to have in the next game. Don't take it like, you know, oh, why would you put number 10 and, you know, why would you put that in number 10 and not number one? It's not like that sort of list. This is just, you know, I've listed them like that, but um, it's just things I, I would like to have in the 10th MK game. So for 10, I've got Secrets Galore. After doing my, my Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks video, you know, and talking a lot about the secrets, I started to realise, oh, and by the way, I want to thank everyone who watched that video, um, I, I know it was very long, that video, and it could have been longer even, you know, and I honestly didn't think that, that many people watched it, so I really do appreciate that, thank you. Um, I was hoping for a thousand views on it, and it's gone past two thousand, so that, that's good. Um, anyway, as I was saying about secrets, after playing Shaolin Monks and talking about the secrets of the game, um, I started to realise like the last Mortal Kombat and the, the one before it, the, the secrets were shit. Oh, let me reiterate, um, there were some really good ones in the last one, don't get me wrong, hang on, let me explain. I love the reptile thing, I love the noob cyborg thing, I love the toasty boost thing, all that stuff you hit in was like like friggin awesome but I, I mean just the way there was only like one or two unlockable characters you play the story and then you got them I'm sort of like not liking that like they started that they started ditching the unlockable characters around Deception on GameCube because I remember when Deception came out there was like I think it was like heaps of characters had to be unlocked like I think there was like six on this side and I think it might have been 12 uh, at first, you had to unlock through playing the Conquest story mode and finding the chests and the coffins and being at a certain place at a certain time. I loved all that shit. That shit was the best, right? And then when it came out on GameCube, 
those six, because I remember it was like six on this side and six on this side, those 12 then became three on this side and three on this side, and you only had to unlock six characters. And I, and I remember thinking that was crap, like that they were, and then, you know, Armageddon came out and there was only really Dagon and Taven, uh, Taven and Dagon, and uh, was there anyone else? I have a feeling there were four characters. Who am I forgetting? Um, or maybe it's just them. Might have just been those two. Yeah, like, and then it's sort of like the unlockable characters sort of seem to go away. And I, I think it's because people were complaining, oh, fuck, I just bought the game and I want to be Zombie Liu Kang straight away. Just because you know Zombie Liu Kang's in the game doesn't mean you get to fucking play him straight away. If you want to play as Zombie Liu Kang, you gotta fucking earn it. You know, like, uh, I fucking hated that. I hated those people. I was like, oh, fuck, I want to be Kenshi because he's the best, you know. And I want to do all the fucking, you know, telekinetic moves and fuck. I don't want to play uh, the story mode for six hours to unlock Kenshi and blah, blah, blah. Fuck all that, you know. If you want to be Kenshi, you got to unlock him. That, that's as far, as far as I'm concerned, that's how it is. And, like, I was annoyed that, like, yeah, all of, like, the last few Mortal Kombat games had real, you know, two characters. Yeah, I'm, that's bullshit. Deception was the best. Like, Deception, for me, Deception did so many things right as, as a Mortal Kombat title. It had so much content, so much unlockable um, content. And the way, just the way you unlocked it, like, playing that, that, um, Conquest mode was, like, so fucking awesome. I loved it. I loved the whole idea of time and that things were there at certain times and you come back and, and the meditating thing to speed up time and it was it was all done really well and like you go here at night time and there's a, th there's a chest appears, you know, and I, I just thought it was all really cool, you know, and and all that shit just, I don't know, after Deception it all just like went out the window, like Shaolin Monks was cool, but, but then after that it sort of just, just disappeared and the secrets became, you know, un crypt secrets, you know, unlock something in the crypt or, or this or that. So like, for me, I, I want a lot of secrets, you know, and that includes unlockable characters. For number nine, uh, and I'm totally stealing this from Killer Instinct, which I haven't been playing much to be honest. If you guys are wondering why I be haven't been playing Killer Instinct, I was playing it heaps at first. Um, <coughs> I sort of cracked the shits at the controller, it was, it was starting to piss me off. Like, I love the Xbox One controller, don't get me wrong, but it just... It, you can't play Killer Instinct that fucking thing. Like, you need that arcade stick, and that arcade stick is like 400 bucks or 300 bucks, something ridiculous. And I'm, like, because I, I still don't have a job, I'm fucking so poor right now that I can't even buy games anymore. You know what I mean? I, I don't buy games. I just stop buying games. That was the one thing I always never wanted to stop buying were video games. And like last year, the, the last game I bought was uh, at Christmas time, because I got some Christmas money, I bought um, Phoenix Wright uh, Dual Destinies. I got that in January. It came out in October. I wanted to have that day one, you know, like, you know, and I still don't have the new Professor Layton game, which I'd love to play because that continues on from the last one. Um, and this Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton coming up, I have to have that. I have to. I'll sell a kidney if I have to. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I still don't have The Last of Us, and I still, you know, there's still a lot of games I didn't get to, so. Um, yeah, so. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, it was, it went right off the track. I was talking about Killer Instinct, uh, the arcade stick, and I got totally sidetracked. Um, the thing I want, sorry, from Killer Instinct is I love this idea that they've put up. I, 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 they had some problems with it, but but in, in general, the idea is fucking awesome. And that's the Rage Quit Jail. And I think Mortal Kombat needs this, and I think all fighting games need this, because fuck those Rage Quitting scumbags. If you're a Rage Quitter, you're a fucking scumbag. Because, like, honestly, I sucked at Killer Instinct. You know how many times I got altered? You know, I haven't even done an ultra on anyone. You know, I had some guy do a 140 or 130 hit ultra combo on me. Did I run up and fuck flip the controller off because I lost? No, I let the guy have his moment of glory. He beat me, he earned it. You know, if you're a rage quitter, you're just a fucking little baby pussy. You know, you shouldn't be playing... If you're a rage quitter, you shouldn't be playing games. You know, like, I've been mad. I've been more mad at the computer, though. You know, I've thrown my controller in anger, but more at the AI than a human opponent, because like, 
because AI just cheats so much, just like exploits timers and cooldown periods, and just you know, just, they just do what they want to, as part of their their AI, and I fucking hate that when they when you know that they're cheating. That's like for example, you throw a freeze, and then you know you can't throw another freeze straight away. You gotta wait like one, two, and then you can throw another freeze. The computer's like freeze, freeze, freeze. I fucking hate that. You know, it's it's like you know that they're they're exploiting something that they shouldn't be able to do. So when when another human like you know beats me, I don't really care. I can get mad if I think I'm good at something. Like um, I, I was back in the day, I was really sharp at Ultimate MK3. Like you know, not many people could beat me, and we would have these intense fucking matches um, in the arcade because my arcade my arcade machine was in the arcade and. The guy I worked with, he got pretty good and we would play and like sometimes we would be, the, the game would be so on edge, it would be so close because we started to learn each other's sort of patterns a bit and that's the, the key to being a Mortal Kombat player, player is not have a pattern, but sometimes it's hard, but uh, we would, it was literally coming down to like splinters of energy on both sides and we'd start fucking jumping up and down and <laughs> like and getting really like fucking excited and people would laugh because it would be, it would be that intense you know and but you know like I never was like you know fuck you man fuck me you know switch the arcade machine off no I you know so you know we need rage quit jail because rage quit jail is awesome and because it's Mortal Kombat you know what they could call it the prison of souls how good cool is that how, like I gave you that idea right there nether realm if you don't call it the prison of souls yeah, it's the only it's the only name that you should call it the prison of souls for those rage quitting fucktards <laughs> you know let them kill each other in jail fuck them you know so yeah I really like that and yeah I think that should be in the next Mortal Kombat for number 8 uh, I'm gonna say uh, or the eighth thing on my list. One of the things I'd like to have in the next Mortal Kombat, MK10, uh, is I'd like to have Dan Forden make, uh, doing some new tracks. Like, Dan Forden did all the, <coughs> excuse me, Dan Forden did all the old musical tracks for Mortal Kombat, you know, MK1, MK2, MK3, MK4, uh, and I think Deadly Alliance. Then after that, you know, we got, you know, Vince Pontarelli started and, you know, and I really like Vince, Vince and uh, there's a, a Sasha, someone, and there's a few other people, uh, composers, that compose the music on MK. And I like them all, don't get me wrong. But there's something about Dan's style, like in the older games, and maybe it just suited the older games, I don't know, but I'd like to see him actually do some tracks. Like, because I think as far as what he's doing, and maybe I'm totally wrong about this, it's just not clear, like, there's no way to really check or read up on it. Um, but for me, it feels like other people are doing the music and Dan Ford and sort of in, in control of, like, putting into the game and being, like, the engineer behind it and, and that. I don't think he's creating music anymore. I think he's just, like, the sound dude. And, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, you got your, your Brian Chard... Uh, Dan Ford and, and the guys I mentioned, you know, and it, w it would be really awesome to get Dan Ford and doing some tracks. Um, it would be old school. And I mean, this is MK10, so this is where you can go, even, he doesn't have to, I'm not saying, you know, he should score the whole game. He could just do a few tracks or one track or even just a few and I'd be like, ah, oh, that's fucking cool, you know, and they could even get other people like this Mick Gordon who worked on Killer Instinct. I love what he did with the music in Killer Instinct. He he did something I've never seen before with that. Like like I was talk, talking about in one of my videos, the Killer Instinct videos, the music was layered. So like when you would get to, you know, like the, the finishing or the, you know, ultra sort of time in KI, you had this thing where you would start the combo and it would ramp up and it would just build like that and it made the music dynamic and it wasn't just oh okay this is the music and this is what's going to happen now it made the music depending on your combo you know it would extend and keep going and going and going and it was just very cool like I really liked that. Like, a, that, 
that's one of those things I hadn't really seen ever done before. I don't know if it was his total idea. Like, I, I mean, I know he did all the music. I'm guessing the whole thing was his idea. You know, but it just, it was really fucking cool. That would be, I think, really cool to have in MK. Excuse me. Just to have some of that music doing that. But, I mean, the thing with MK is, like, you really got your sort of finishing. You don't really do big combos, so... It might not work with MK, but I think I think Mick Gordon could do some really cool stuff. Anyway, because he's a cool dude, and he, he made he did some really badass music with um with Killer Instinct. So, um, yeah, that's that's my number eight. Like either Dan Forden doing some music or Mick Gordon joining the team, maybe. Um, just to have something really over the top, sort of with the music. Don't be afraid to like have more music than you need. Don't be afraid to do it. I mean, I know it costs money, right? But this is MK fucking 10. You should be forking out for this, Warner Brothers. You know, um, yeah, you could have all this extra music and you could have swappable tracks and, yeah. Music for me is really big in Mortal Kombat. It, it's very part of the immersive environment. So like, for me, it's, it's a very big deal. So yeah, I think that'd be cool. All right. For number seven, I've got Retro Skins Unlockable. Um, the thing with, um, you know, with MK9 and Killer Instinct is like, everyone wants those classic skins and they always make you pay for it. And me asking for this is probably redundant because I'm sure when MK10 comes out, they're gonna have all that classic MK4 skin, the classic Shinnok skin, and the classic Jarek skin. Remember when he had the vest? You know, and um, you know they they charge for all that shit and they make a lot of money from it. Yeah, I can't blame them. If they got if they gotta have if they're gonna have the extra music and they're gonna charge for the stuff, I'll allow it. You know, <laughs> so. But um, I think this sh you should be able to unlock some classic skins in the game. I hate it. Like you have to buy everything extra. I think like you could have a few classic skins or maybe like classic skin pack one you unlock at the end of Challenge Tower and then there's like a second classic skin pack or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that would be cool. For number six, I've got Challenge Tower 2. Uh, I really enjoyed the fucking Challenge Tower in MK9. That was a lot of fun. So, I mean, I know the MK team doesn't like to sort of repeat themselves. Like, the only thing they've sort of re repeated in the games is the crypt. They've always made the crypt bigger and had more content, which is cool, because that's not a game, it's just a, it's an archive. But, um, Challenge Tower was, was a lot of fun. Those little challenges, it, just doing a little, I had so much fun with that, except that, oh, that last time I played on that live stream. Oh man, I <laughs> still won't get over that. I lost by a splinter of energy, that 186 or something. Really hard challenge. Um, some of them were real hard, and some of them were like, you know, um, fun. Most of them were fun. So I really had fun with the challenge tower. So it'd be cool if they had a bit even longer challenge tower. And you know, I don't, I've got the Mortal Kombat on the Vita, but I don't have a Vita, so I've never played the Vita version of MK. I mean, I've played it like, you know, someone's given me their Vita for a second and had a quick go, but I haven't sat down and played it for long. So I think that would be really cool. But uh, like I said, you normally the MK team likes to do new things, so we'll have to wait and see. But uh, I really did enjoy Challenge Tower, so if that came back, I wouldn't be disappointed. For number five, I've got I've written MK4 levels, and by by that, what I mean is um, I'm assuming that we're going into the world of Mortal Kombat 4 now. Now. Mortal Kombat 4 has always had mixed opinions. A lot of people didn't like it, they did like it. They didn't like the weapon combat, they did like the weapon combat. It's very, very flip floppy. Um, <clears throat> they thought the graphics were shit, you know, but that's how they were on the arcade. They had a lot of polygons, you know, they didn't look, you know, rendered. But when they came on the home market, they then looked more rendered on the PlayStation and PC. You know, whereas the N64 looked more like the arcade. And a lot of people thought they looked funny and, you know, but it was a technically, the arcade machine was very advanced. They still haven't been able to emulate that, as far as I know, you know, because of, it had this special technology that, um, 
doesn't make emulating that ROM easy or something. So, um, if they're going to do this MK4, one thing I really liked about it were the levels of MK4. I always liked MK4, I'll be honest. I had a ball with MK4, arcade version, home version. I, had a, I, I played that a lot, man, a fucking lot. I had that on N64, no loading times, and it was the same as the arcade, so I was quite happy. Even though the PlayStation people were going, well, that one looks fucking better. You know, they probably hadn't even played the fucking arcade version. The N64 one to me was the arcade version. So I was happy to play that, and you know, I was a fucking beast with Tanya. I was fucked with Tanya. My, my, we, I used to have these, these wars with an old friend, and um, I'd either be Tanya or Quan Chi, and like, because like, he would do air fireballs and shit, and then I'm like, okay, you wanna be, you know, you wanna be a fucking dirty bastard? Fine. And then I'd pick Tanya, and I'd be like, and I'd be doing the flips and the, the drill kicks, and I'd be like, you know, I, even she had air fireballs, and I'm dropping air fireballs, and, and he would crack the shits if I picked Tanya. So, so what would happen was we'd play, and we'd play, and we'd play a few normal games, and then as soon as he would cheap out, as soon as he would go to, I forget what he was doing. He was being cheap with someone, and I'm like, okay. And then it's like, as soon as he did that, I go, oh, fine. And then I pick Tanya, and then he'd be like, oh, fucking Tanya. And then he cracked the shits because he'd know, like, I'd probably go, I was probably gonna win, you know, <laughs> because I was fucking cheap as with her. But um, anyway, I'm totally off again. But um, for me, the MK4 levels were badass. I loved them. They were the big elder gods in the background. Um, you know, uh, what else? There were, there were some that were like, you know, the well was like, meh. Um, there were some, I liked the outside ones. The, the one with the rain and the one with the elder gods looked very cool. Um, I'm trying to think what the other ones were. There was a lot of inside ones, actually. Um, there's that one with the Raiden symbol on the floor. And, um, yeah, so it, what I'm saying is, like, if they're going to do the MK4 levels, I want them to be presented exactly how the MK2 and MK3 and MK1 levels were in this MK9. They were, like, so much attention to detail. Like, it was all HD graphics and, and beautiful detail. Like, and I, I always remember that Living Forest because that was, like, one of the first... One of the first things I saw when I saw that Mortal Kombat in at E3 was that was the Living Forest, and it just looked fucking amazing, man. Like, you know, the the guy with all the beetles all over him, and he's like vomiting up and shit, and he's like all caught in the vines, and all the crows and the dead bodies hanging upside down, and just I love all that detail, man, because it was still the Living Forest, but they just added all this really cool detail which was wicked and I'd love to see them do the same sort of thing with MK4 with some of those levels and even maybe even some of those mythology levels if they'd work in the MK4 timeline I haven't really thought about it but some of those MK mythology levels I love those levels I'd love to see them in HD like the Bridge of Immortality and stuff which I know is you know in Nether Realm, but but still anyway <laughs> that's what I'd like to see as number five so for number four I've got a sandbox storyline I've written. Um, for me, um, with Deception, and which I spoke about before, Deception had, you know, the free roaming, like, you could, it was literally like an open paddock, and you could run from one side of the paddock to the other, and there'd be people and houses and shit in between, you know, and there'd be quests and stuff. I really liked that. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't, when um, Armageddon came out, it was more follow the path, sort of, sort of thing, you couldn't really stray off it, you know, it just led you in one direction. And um, I, I more enjoy the sandbox, and it's not to the level of Grand Theft Auto or anything, the Deception one, and I liked that, it was charming, like it was like, it wasn't epic and big, you know what, Grand Theft Auto doesn't impress me that much, I'll be honest guys, I, the last one I played was number four. I know people get really excited about it, oh it's cool, you can shoot that guy in the street and I'm over that man, I was over that after the first Grand Theft Auto, I'll be honest. I was really good at Grand Theft Auto 1 with the top down view but you know it just went, when it came out on, when it first came out on Sony and it was all 3D and now you can shoot the helicopter down and then they added, kept adding things and now you can do this and now you can do that and now you can swim. I'm like why the fuck couldn't I swim in the first game, you know, it's like, and I just, oh, oh, it really annoyed me that that won Game of the Year last year too. Fuck all that. That had the worst launch ever. I mean, EA cops so much shit 
for their SimCity launch. But what about Grand Theft Auto? It's like a top number one game that everyone's expecting and they launch it and it fails. It failed. The online failed. And yeah, you gave out your stimulus package and all that crap and yeah. So what? You know, you, what about e, uh, EA and SimCity? They get so much shit for their launch. And what, and Grand Theft Auto gets glanced over because, oh, they gave us a stimulus package. No bullshit. And that's what really pissed me off that they won Game of the Year. You know what, the game might be good, but, you know, the launch and, and you know, that means a lot that the game fucking works when you buy it, you know? And it didn't fucking work for a lot of people. And that's shit for me. That, and that's why I thought definitely something like Bioshock Infinite and, you know, I'm real sad to hear about Irrational Games, man, because they just, they just closed their doors. Um, <clears throat> or The Last of Us. <clears throat> Those games should have been Game of the Year. They had no problems on launch. None that I heard of, you know? So, anyway, <laughs> I, I always wander off, off the path, but Sandbox Storyline is, is what I want. Like, it might be asking for two months, being, you know, if they, if they did it, they'd have to do it all detailed, and they sort of didn't back then, they could sort of get away with it, having a bit low tech. I think they'd need a bit more time to do it if they were gonna do it, but fuck it, would be cool. Can you imagine if it was like, you know, a sandbox storyline running around and talking to people, and it was all good graphics, and, you know, and go do this, and they, and they kept releasing DLC, another 50 missions, and, oh, fuck, that, see, that, that DLC would be worth it. You know, if they had a sandbox MK game storyline where you run around and do all these things, you know, and then, okay, I've done all my missions and I've unlocked everything, and then, rather than just say, here's the next DLC that'll unlock the Scorpion MK4 skin, they don't give you that. They give you, the next DLC package is, is another 50 missions, and in those 50 missions, it unlocks things, and maybe they don't even tell you what it unlocks. So you do those 50 missions and then you get um, like a Scorpion MK4 skin. Rather than just tell you what it is, you don't know. It's like a mystery prize. That'd be fucking cool. Anyway, that that's... I would love a sandbox uh, adventure game. I just... What they did with Deception was was awesome. That has so much potential to be like a another game and like really awesome. Number three. Awesome Netcode. Now... When MK came out last time, a lot of people, myself included, had trouble with the game. Now, especially internationally, and it was because there were regional codes, there was regional locks, believe it or not, like the game would load up and everything, then you'd try and have a match and it would just kick you off. But um, I remember one thing that annoyed me actually was Hector, and I respect Hector a lot, believe me, like he was a really cool dude to me, and he's, he's, not, he's not part of the Netherrealm team anymore. But um, Hector did say something once that I was like, no, that's bullshit. Um, when people were complaining about the netcode, he was like, it, there's nothing wrong with the netcode. It's people's routers and connections. And I'm like, that's bullshit. My, my router and connection's fine, you know? And I know it's fine because I download a lot of crap and I upload a lot of crap to YouTube. So I know there's nothing wrong there. And I can play everything else online fine, you know? And when Killer Instinct came out, uh, I played another MK fan and he's in Luxembourg and we had a game of Killer Instinct and I couldn't believe how good the netcode was. It was flawless. There was no lag. None, guys. I'm talking no lag. Like he was sitting next to me in the same room playing. That's how good it was. You know, and we were playing for a while and it stopped and then we had a lot of problems after that. So like, it was hard to get a match but once you got a match it was like good. But what I'm saying is once you had a match and had a connection, like it was like really good most of the time, like eight, eight out of 10 times, like it had really great net code. And MK needs that same net code. I don't care if they have to buy it from Double Helix or Amazon, whoever the fuck owns Killer Instinct, Microsoft. Um, they should get that code because it was, it was really good. And the MK9 code was really shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Netherrealm, but it was, come on. I mean, you can't just say because the netcode works for everyone in the United States, there's nothing wrong with it. No. No. There was definitely problems with it. Okay. So, number two. 
can't believe I put this at number two. I want, because this is MK10, I want an awesome collector's edition. Like the MK9 one, which I got there, that's the collector's. I still don't have a tournament edition. One day I'll get one on e off eBay. But, um, the, for me, that, that MK9 collector's was awesome at the bookends. And, and I really want that tournament edition. Don't get me wrong, I really want it. I just, I just haven't had the, the money or the, the cash or the timing's been ill or I haven't had, you know, and the game was banned and I thought I couldn't get I had people offer me them and, you know, I said don't send them because I thought they'd be taken away and then it turns out they weren't and uh, the whole thing's a fuck up, you know. So, I'm, I'm annoyed I don't have a tournament edition because I really do want one. And, you know, it's... I know I didn't play MK9 that much, but it's fucking, it's a fucking cool game. And just, the thing about it too is like, you look at an arcade stick these days, they're like 400 bucks for the Xbox One, and that tournament edition was like 200 bucks or something. That's like really good price, and you get an arcade stick. And that MK arcade stick was like really good, that tournament one, it had the hat parts, and the fucking little gold little latch, and you open it, and you put the game inside, and the memory foam, it had all that stuff. That shit was awesome, man. Like. So for me, uh, I've got number two, awesome collector's edition. I want, by that I mean, I'd love to have a tournament edition again. I think they should make more. I think they were fucking cool. I reckon just do more arcade sticks. Maybe do them for Xbox One, PS4 this time, because you know, there's, there's not many. There's the Mad Cats one and it's an insane price. So if you could do one for, PS4 and Xbox One. I think people would really, really lap it up, even if they weren't MK fans, just to get the arcade stick, you know? Um, and I'd want something along the lines of this, uh, like a statue, or the Injustice statue. I was thinking, because um, that, that Injustice statue is really cool, by the way, that Batman Wonder Woman, that's the that's the, the European one. It's different in America, I think. Um, for me, what I'd like to see, like I think this would be really cool as a collector's, it would be Sub-Zero, and he's got the ice sword out, like that, right? And then Scorpion, like, and he's like in a pose like that, maybe he's got the fucking harpoon in his hand, and he's like about to chuck it at Sub-Zero, right? But, yeah, they have this real cool pose, maybe they're in the nether realm, so maybe they're like standing on skulls or something, they've got this awesome pose, and... Sub-Zero's, there's a switch on it. Sub-Zero's ice sword lights up fucking blue. And Scorpion, he's surrounded by flames all around his feet, maybe coming up out of the ground, and that all lights up orange. That would be fucking cool. Am I the only one who has the vision for this shit? Like, cause I saw, you know what, I wasn't, and, and it's funny, cause they, just this morning they announced that Batman uh, Arkham Knight, which looks amazing, like, cause I, I I, did, I wasn't a big fan of that Arkham Origins, you know, Rocksteady wasn't doing it, and I was like, that's bullshit, I didn't know why they weren't doing it, maybe they were busy working on this, maybe that's why, but you know, and then it had so many problems, I okay, gave, fuck that, you know, and they've announced this uh, Arkham Knight, which looks amazing, anyway, the Arkham Origins, though, had an amazing collector's edition, it was like the Joker, because like one of my friends has it, it's like sitting down, there's like all these TVs behind him, and you flick a switch, and all the TVs light up, so it's possible, I could do some sort of light up statue, like I said. Sub-Zero's ice sword lighting up blue, and Scorpion, like with flames all around him. All lighting up, that would just look so fucking badass in this room. I need that shit. <laughs> um, also, that's just, that's just me talking about the statue. As far as what's in the box, for me, one of the most important things that I think should be in the box, and I, this has to be on a CD. Fuck digital. Fuck it in the ass. Um, soundtracks. Where the fuck are the Mortal Kombat soundtracks? Where the fuck are they, man? I'm the guy that always puts them on my website. You know, I'm like, rip the music out of the game and put them on the website, you know? And, and I do it because there's no fucking soundtrack. You know, like, I've never, I've never put the MK1 or 2 soundtrack on my website. I've never put the 3 and 4 one because there were CDs that you could get. I've got the 3 and 4 CD there, but the MK1 and 2 ones slipped through my fingers many many a time. But there was never Deadly Alliance one, Deception, Armageddon, uh, Shelly Monks, um, 
MK9, and they had some of the coolest fucking music, you know? And I'm getting sick of no soundtrack. Every other game does a fucking soundtrack. You know, like, seriously. This is MK fucking 10. For me, this is, for me, this is like big. Like, you know, when it was MK's anniversary, and they were making that injustice shit, I was really pissed off. They did that quick video. They went out to Chicago. Like, it was a cool video, don't get me wrong. You know, and they talked to Carlos, uh, oh, sorry, Daniel P uh, Pizzi, uh, Peniza. They spoke to, you know, a whole lot of people from MK1. And that was a great video, but that's all they did. And they only gave it to GameSpot or IGN. Uh, that's another thing that really pissed me off, too. I'm like, fuck. How many fan sites have stuck around, been fans from the start of Mortal Kombat? My, my website started around the time of MK, uh, Ultimate MK3 or MK3. You got your MK Online's been around for fucking ever. And you got your TRMK, and you got, you know, and then there's all these new sites too. You know, all these sites have been supporting Mortal Kombat all that long, and they didn't even let them say, here's this video we did. You, you, thanks for the support on Mortal Kombat. No, they just gave it to IGN. Fuck that. Anyway. For me, that was a bullshit anniversary, and it was a bullshit celebration, and, it, and for me, this MK10 should be the real anniversary and real celebration of, what was it, 20 years of Mortal Kombat? 20 or 25 years? I think 20 years. Uh, I think it was. Anyway, whatever it is. Um, so for me, this one's big. So I think they should have a whole lot of soundtracks. I think there should be an MK1 soundtrack, MK2, MK3, MK4, Deadly Alliance. I'm serious. They fucking did that for Street Fighter. You know, and I fucking hate that. As much shit as like the whole, you know, Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter thing, you know, Street Capcom always has mad collector's editions. You know, they, they had, and they had the CDs in the box. They weren't digital, they had actual fucking CDs in the box for that Street Fighter collector's edition. I, even I wanted that, you know, because the Street Fighter music's cool, I like it. I'm not even a fan of Street Fighter, really, but the music's fucking awesome. You know, and I was like, fuck, I wouldn't mind those CDs, you know. I really want to get them, but it didn't even come out in Australia, so I, I just gave up. But, um, I would love to have that, man. And if, if you're going to do it, you know, don't be one of those, you know, things where they're like, we put it on the Blu-ray disc and now you can listen to the sound. Fuck that. I hate that. So every time I want to listen to one of the the tracks from one of the Mortal Kombat games, I've got to put my put it in my fucking Xbox One or PS4. No, fuck that! Give me a CD so I can rip it to my computer or put it on my iPod and listen to it on the go. It's it's just new. It's Mortal Kombat music. It's not like you sell it on a CD. You know what? If you want to sell it, sell it. I'll fucking buy it. I don't care. I'll buy Mortal Kombat CDs with the fucking music on them. But you don't, you don't even make it available. You don't do anything. You know, so if... Yeah, fuck it. Ugh, it makes me mad. It makes me angry. You know, I just... Because that, that music that Dan Ford and all those guys have done on all the Mortal Kombat's is so fucking awesome. And there, there's no way for people to hear it. And that's why I go out of my way to put it on my website for people. So I can just enjoy the music without the... Uh, 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 finish it. You know, they can just listen to the music. And be like, oh yeah, that's cool. That's you know, that sounds cool. That sounds very living foresty, you know, with a magic flute, the woo, -woo, -woo, -woo you know, yeah. yeah, that's how that's how I am. I do like music, I like a lot of music, you know. So for me that that that's about the everything about the collector's edition. That's what that's what I put in number two, you know. Awesome collector's edition, lots of CDs. Uh, give us like a cool statue or something that lights up. Um you know, more behind the scenes stuff, more, just keep digging, man, like, do it, that Mortal Kombat Unseen thing you did at Midway was cool, you could do another one of those now and show that at Netherrealm, you know, uh, what it's like, like, if, show the differences between when you worked for Midway and working for Netherrealm, is there much of a change, do you still get up early in the morning, Ed, and, and go to work before, before anyone else is there and start work on the, you know, show if it's different. What's changed? Um, I think that would be really cool. You know, I really enjoyed that Mortal Kombat Unseen. That was funny too. They, they put a few little, you know, corny jokes in there and stuff. But I really, really enjoyed that video. That, that was probably one of my favorite things in Deadly Alliance. Was seeing all that stuff and just seeing, you know, even just those five seconds when um, 
you know, Steve Ryan's like, yeah, I'm working on Cyrax's fatality and I'm just trying to get the right and and you can just see that he's got it on his workstation and he's working on the game. That's cool seeing that sort of stuff, you know? So yeah, let's move on to number one. So for number one, the one thing I want the most, this is funny, because a lot of you might go, that's stupid. Why do I even watch this guy anymore? And his video's too fucking long too. Um, the one thing I want that wasn't in MK9 and that really pissed me off was there was no fucking portal level. Fuck all that, man. <laughs> like, they, like most of the MK1 and MK2 and MK3 levels were in the last Mortal Kombat. Hang on, I need to sit. Mm. And, um, I, because, I, like I said, going back to E3, I remember when I saw The Living Forest, I was like, fucking mind blown. And then when I thought about it, like, when I started thinking about what other levels I'd like to see like that in the game, the first thing I thought of, because it's my favourite level, was the portal. I'm like, that's going to look so fucking cool. It's going to be this giant, swirling portal, and... The monks are going to be floating and they're going to be guarding and they're going to be floating platforms and they're, they're probably going to add all this new cool stuff. They're going to add more definition to this stage. It's going to look fucking amazing. I can't wait to see the fucking portal in MK9. It's going to look fucking awesome. And that wasn't in it. And I was like, what? I couldn't believe that. And then like all the characters like Quan Chi, they just, they just appear everywhere. The portals just open. I'm like, come on. It was like taking something away from the game, man, for me, because like, the portal of like, you know, it's, it's a, a gateway between our world and theirs. It's a, a gateway between our world and Earthrealm. And I like that. That's how Shao Kahn invades places. You know, it's, he marches his big armies into the portals and, and I was, yeah, I was, I was really pissed off. <laughs> I did not get to see that. Because I was just imagining how cool it was going to be, and it, it was going to be so. That level would have looked so bad at us in with MK9's engine, you know. Uh, and then I, I, I kept hanging on. I was hoping and hoping for a DLC because I remember early on they talked about how they reckon they could add pretty much anything to the game DLC, and everyone got real excited. And then in the end, they only added skins. Really, they didn't add anything else. They added characters and skins. So, in the end, it was just the same as every other friggin' game. I thought they were really gonna add levels and content and fatalities and all that stuff, and they didn't. So I was just, I was very disappointed. But, um, I, I, it might not work for M MK4, depending on how they do the story, unless it's possible if they ease it between MK3 and MK4, but it's still sort of not, because MK3 is urban, it's like in Earthrealm, whereas the portal's more in Outworld, really, the one I'm talking about, anyway. So, yeah. I mean, I know they had that scene where Khan appears on the rooftop, he walks through the portal. Fuck that. I'm talking about the the Outworld side, I guess. Like, you, we've never seen where the portal goes to in Earthrealm, really. We've only really seen the Outworld side of it. And that's that's the level I wanted to see. So that's my number one thing. And you guys mightn't agree. You guys might have been saying, my number one thing for MK4 is I want to see Kai come back and he's really cool. Fuck Kai. Fuck him. He's like the worst MK character. I've never liked him. <laughs> I know I say this all the time. Kai and Dairu. Kai and Dai, it <laughs> rhymes, you know, <laughs> like, Dairu looked cool and everything, and he had cool moves, and I just, I just hated him, <laughs> I'm like, he just, his story, I just, I don't know, like, I, with, with Mortal Kombat and me, I get a connection between the characters, and I understand a lot of the times, okay, Sub-Zero, for me, Sub -Zero, the Sub-Zero Scorpion storyline's the best, because Sub-Zero is bad, and Scorpion's sort of neutral. He's not a good guy or a bad guy, sort of like on the fence. And the stuff that they've done with that story has been really good. The Shang Tsung one I get, the Shao Kahn one I get, the Reptile one I get. They've all got real good stories, and then you have this Dairu guy, and it's like, who the fuck are you? I don't even remember his fucking story. It was so, like, mediocre. 
You know, I was just like, who are you? You know, just, and Kai, fuck. Your lightning staff, fuck off. He didn't earn that lightning star. He just shows up. Like That's the problem with MK4. A lot of characters just, they were just introduced in the game and then they were like, you know, they were like suddenly like, you know, Rain suddenly giving Kai his lightning star. He just met him. <laughs> it's like, you know, at least sort of MK1 and MK2, the characters sort of had two games to sort of stick around and, you know, <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so like for me, like, MK4 where I know a lot of people didn't like Jarek, but I actually thought Jarek was better than Kai. With his fucking vest and his spinny blade thingy. You know, but um at least I understood the Jarek storyline that he was, you know, in Kano's gang and that and like as lame as it was, as tacked on as it was. You know, I get it. And that could actually be a possibility. But no, I just didn't like Kai. I just, it's just, there was nothing there for me. So even Kenshi, I like Kenshi's story as a new character. Kenshi's got a great story. I love all that stuff about how he's tricked by Shang Tsung into getting the sword. And then the sword, you know, burned his eyes out. Shang Tsung booby trapped the sword or something, you know. And then he kept the sword though. And became this like fucking master swordsman. That's really fucking cool. That's a good fucking storyline for a new character. And, um, you know, even the Dragon King story was cool. That, that was awesome. And, and I, li I liked that the Dragon King hated Shao Kahn. Said that he was just like nothing. He wasn't a ruler and peasant ruler and all this stuff. And so many people trying to sort of take out while well, you got uh, Quan Chi and Shinnok sort of thing and Dragon King and Shao Kahn. And maybe even Shang Tsung. If he could overthrow Khan, he'd probably take over that world. And then you got, you know, the Goro, Shokan. They don't seem to ever want to be in charge. They seem to be sort of more sort of loyal servants. See, all those stories make sense. But just all the other ones, it was just like you know, Kai and Dairu. Even Hotaru. That story made sense. That he was from the realm of order and all that. You know, that wasn't too bad. You know, but. Yeah, no, I really didn't like Dairu. <laughs> There's probably, I'm just imagining, I'm laughing because I'm imagining on the other end of this, this video, there's someone watching, some hardcore Dairu fan. He's got all these Dairu things up in his room. He's got, he's printed up the renders or something. He's got all these Dairu things stuck on his wall. He's like, Dairu's my favorite. And I'm just sitting here like, for 10 minutes telling me how much I fucking hate this character. And he's like, ripping down the posters. <laughs> <laughs> He's right! Fuck Daru is shit! <laughs> That's what I'm imagining. I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, so they're the, they're the 10 things that I'd like to see in Mortal Kombat. Ah, 10! I think it's a pretty good list. What do you guys think? Post your comments below. I'd like to, because I read everything. Um, I'll be interested to read what you guys want in the next Mortal Kombat, which I think they'll be announcing at E3 this year, which is June, which isn't far away. Because, I mean, Keith has already said he worked on the game, he did some, it looks like he did some voice work. Because if he worked on Mortal Kombat, it seemed to be pretty quick what he did. It seemed to be done pretty fast, and voiceovers are usually pretty fast, I'm guessing. So, what what the fuck was Kiefer doing though? Who would he be voicing? <coughs> yeah, it's very curious that. That piece of news. Very, very curious. You know, I know Ed was a big 24 fan. I, I'm a huge 24 fan. In fact, I can see my my torture briefcase from there, from here. It's behind the camera there. It's one of those little, you know, in 24, that they call it in, an interrogation package. And, the, and they call in Burke or Johnson. I get Burke. And Burke comes in with this little, like, little metal briefcase. And it's got all the needles and shit in it. That's what it is. It's got all the DVDs inside it. <laughs> and that's seasons one to five. And then I've got like the other ones separately. <laughs> I had to have that torture briefcase. So I'm like, that's so cool. Yeah, I really like 24. So I've really liked Keith Sutherland as well as an actor. You know, um, Stand By Me and, you know, Lost Boys and all the stuff he's done. It's just, he's a very cool actor. And there's still a lot of Keith Sutherland things I haven't seen that I'd like to watch. And um, yeah, so I'm, 
yeah, Kiefer Solomon Mortal Kombat, that's, that's great for me. I like both, so I'll be really interested to find out what the hell he's done on Mortal Kombat. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time for another Mortal Kombat video. Maybe not. Maybe a Resident Evil playthrough. Still got to finish that off, so, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you next time.